after returning from a bout with cholera, hepatitis G, and the plague, I'm now back and ready to teach you more about acid-base equilibria. First, rather than showing you a funny chemistry cat today, I instead want to share something with you that comes from howtobeadad.com. My wife emailed this to me a while back. I think it's pretty funny. Some of you guys who have kids may have experienced some of these infamous baby sleep positions. The first one is the roundhouse kick, followed by the neck scarf, snow angels, booby trap, jazz hands, Donkey Kong, the dog house. I'm not speaking to you, the stalker, and my favorite and most commonly experienced H is for hell. Now after the next and final sets of lectures on chapter 16, you guys should be able to do the following. First, generate acid-base equilibrium or Ka expressions for weak acids and Kb expressions for weak bases. Second, sort weak acids and weak bases according to their acidities or basicities by using their Ka or Kb values. Third, use the Ka values of weak acids to determine a solution's pH. Fourth, know what polyprotic acids are. Fifth, perform interconversions using Ka and Kb. Sixth, sort metals according to their ability to form metal hydroxide bases. And seventh, know what factors influence acid strength. And lastly, we will skip sections 9 and 11 from this chapter. That's the lineup. Let's get started. As we discussed in an earlier lecture to which I'll post right here, strong acids dissociate almost completely, making their acid-base equilibrium reaction be, for all intents and purposes, almost like a one-way arrow to the right. Thus, strong acids equilibria heavily favor products. In other words, you don't really have a two-way arrow here. It's all one way. Now, that isn't true for weak acids. Weak acids equilibria have a more balanced reactant product ratio than strong acids. As with all acid-base equilibria, the acid-base dissociation constant, or Ka, for a weak acid is this. Notice, of course, that we always omit any liquids or solids on either side of the reaction. Now, as you might imagine, for strong acids, Ka is larger than 1. And the reason is because you have virtually all product and very, very tiny amount of reactant. While as for weak acids, Ka will be less than 1 because it will be the reverse. Now, for your reference, here are some common weak acids with their accompanying Ka's. You're welcome, of course, to pause the video and look at the Ka values. You'll notice that for all of these weak acids, the Ka values are less than 1. That takes us to a question. Which of the following is the weakest acid? As you might guess, and in connection with what I've talked about earlier, the lower the Ka value, the weaker the acid. Hence, I'll let you do this one on your own. Now, in an earlier lecture, I did some examples involving pH and strong acids. With strong acids, it's really easy to calculate pH because they go virtually 100% to the right. So all you have to do is determine what the concentration of the strong acid was at the beginning. And directly from that, you can calculate how many molar equivalents of H plus are spit out by it. Once you do that, you just take the pH equation, negative log of the concentration of H plus, and hip hop array, you're done. For weak acids, however, it's not quite as simple. Because weak acids kind of go back and forth and back and forth, so the H plus concentration is not always stoichiometrically equivalent to the amount of weak acid concentration. Hopefully that makes sense. In other words, to calculate the pH from a weak acid, we're going to have to use Ka. So if we know the Ka and initial concentrations for weak acids, we can calculate the concentration of H+. But it's a little bit more complicated than for a strong acid. Here's how we do that. First, we write down our equilibrium equation, which generically should look like this. Second, we have to write down our equilibrium constant, or Ka expression, which should look like this. Third, we make an ice table like the one shown here, where we fill in everything that we know, and then we put a variable x in for everything that we don't know. For this example, we're going to pretend that we have an initial weak acid concentration of 0.3 moles per liter. So at initiation, this is the concentration of HA. At initiation, of course, the concentrations of A minus, which is the conjugate base, and H3O plus, hydronium, are going to be zero. Now gradually, HA is going to dissociate to form A minus and H3O plus by a certain amount. What is that amount? Well, I'm going to call that amount X. So I can write over here 
on the second row under HA minus X to indicate the amount of change in concentration. So what will the values under A minus and H3O plus be over here? You'll notice that the stoichiometric ratio of HA to A minus to H3O plus is one to one to one, which means that if I decrease the concentration of HA by X moles, the number of moles of A minus and H3O plus that are going to appear are also going to be X. Hopefully you're okay with that. Now the final row is of course made by just adding up what's present in the first row by what's present in the second row. So my final row, E, is going to have 0.3 minus X molar concentrations of HA, and my individual rows for A minus and H0 plus, and my equilibrium concentrations for my products are going to be X. This is step three of the process of calculating a pH for a weak acid. Is it a little bit more involved than a strong acid? Yeah, it is, sorry. We'll go on to step four then. Four, put your values in your Ka expression and solve it for x. In this case, we've got our k expression being here, which I, which I showed you a few moments ago. I set that equal to my x values. My x values for a minus and h3o plus were each x. My basement or denominator concentration was 0.03 minus x. We good? Okay, now here's a tip. Because this is a weak acid, the amount of dissociation is pretty small. Hence, we can simplify things by just assuming that the x in the denominator is zero. I realize that isn't 100% true. x is not zero. But compared to 0.3, x is going to be a very, very, very tiny number, which means that even if you calculate what x is and throw it in there, 0.3 minus x is going to be so close to 0.3 that you can practically just call x zero just in the denominator. Hopefully you're okay with that. So if you turn x in the denominator into zero, it simplifies things a lot. So what's the whole point of all of this? The point is to get the concentration of H3O plus. Now, as I've mentioned elsewhere, H3O plus and H plus, they're kind of used interchangeably in aqueous solutions, sorry. So really what x represents is the concentration of H3O plus or H plus. Now, once you have that, you can calculate pH by remembering that pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of H plus or H3O plus. That's pretty much it. Got it? Okay, maybe not. Let's take a look at an example. Calculate the pH of a 0.2 molar solution of HCN. The Ka value for that acid is 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10th. Now, I invite you to follow the steps I just outlined to attempt this on your own first. Then, if you wish, you can click a link here to a separate video in which I'll show you how to do it on the board. That takes us to the end of this video. Please stay tuned to the next one in which I'll teach you more about weak acids, strong bases, strong acids, big bases, crazy stuff. I don't even know. Anyway, until then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.